When it comes to my favorite armor in Elden Ring, there really is no contest. It's the Raptor's Black Feathers. Not only is the drip immaculate, but it also has an upside, giving the user 10% bonus damage to their jump attacks. But whose cloak is this? Did Eileen the Crow go on a bender and end up miles outside of Yarnum? No, it's the cloak of the Ravenmount Assassins. They also have a unique weapon and a unique Ash of War. Does all of that combine to be better than the other monocolored assassin in this game? It's weird that there are two of them. There's only one way to find out, and that's to test this out as a secret starting class. Hey everybody, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. To watch these runs live, follow us on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time, and we have some silly ideas to get through before the DLC comes out. Check out the Patreon if you want to support us directly. It's the best place to do it. We have exclusive polls, videos, and Discord channels. You might even get to play some games of Magic the Gathering or Helldivers with me. Or if you want to give us some money, you can support by liking and subscribing. We're so close to 100k, I'd really love to be there before my birthday. It'd be a really cool present. Now let's deliver some presents to the lands between. One could say, a killer present. Sent. We're starting off pale as hell. Why? Because there ain't no laws when you're drinking claws. Ain't no laws when you're drinking claws is just a slogan, not legal advice. Federal and state laws are still applicable when drinking hard seltzer. Tulak and Ego is not responsible for how its viewers behave while drinking white claws. See? We jumped off a cliff and landed safely in Limgrave. Well, if Limgrave is safe. Let's get a horse from Melina. All the gear we need is in Altus, which means we have some zooming to do. Third Church of America. Get our white claw flask. We'll mix with some juice in later. There's better flavors with stamina and charged attack. Probably like lime and vanilla. Maybe not the best combo, then we can imagine mounting a raven in Fort Height. There we grab the Dectus piece part one and bail. Warp out to the Dragon Barrow next and boogie past Grail who hits our horse. Yikes. I can't remember the last time this guy even came close to hitting us on this run. It's scary. Fort Faroth is a lot easier when you don't care about saving 100 runes. We just grab what we need and warp out. Assassins get paid very well. We can make up for that later. I guess. I don't know that for a fact. I would presume you charge a lot as an assassin. That wage stagnation is hitting everybody though, so who knows these days. Learning is just a pit stop on the way to Altus, a very long pit stop. It's good that you drank that big water, but it's also guaranteeing you're going to need a gas station in like 20 minutes. You Use those sticky rogue fingers to pick up the key behind Smarag, then warpy warpy until we're on the Bellum Highway. Finally, we've reached Altus and my brain goes on full autopilot. We just start heading for the sealed tunnel. That's the wrong Altus tunnel with fake walls you have to push through to get through it. Another weird thing that happens twice in the game. But for real, we're looking for the Sage's Cave. It's a pretty easy cave to run through, as long as you remember where the claws and cape are. If you don't, the skeletons here hit pretty hard. Though, one of them does. It's the one with the Executioner's Axe. Yeah. Raptor Talon's on the second try and then I miss where to go for the feathers. It was actually a bit further into the cave. Hard to see without a light. I don't need a light because I know where I'm going. Pay no attention to the fact that I died because I didn't know where I was going. Let's get some lore from the claws. Claws comprised of two sharp, thin blades wielded by the assassins of Ravenmount. This weapon allows them to imitate the attacks of the deathbirds. Besides excelling at airborne attacks, its charge attack mimics the vicious swoop of a bird of prey. Wait, where is Ravenmount? It's not in the game, right? Can we get Ravenmount in the DLC? That'd be neat. From the mask, this ritual implement relentlessly digs into the wearer's face, preserving one's human instincts while dressed as an imitation of the Deathbirds. I don't like that they're fans of Deathbirds. That's just like a regular pattern in these descriptions. I hate the Deathbirds. They're like the most annoying bosses in the All Bosses runs. Finally from the feathers, robe crafted with black feathers of a bird of prey worn by the assassins of Ravenmount. A ritual implement for transforming into a Deathbird, if only by imitation, strengthens jump attacks. We are birds of prey, bringers of of death. Wow, Birds of Prey, very cool. I expect all the dudes in the comments to be very normal about it. Not give this video a downvote just because the character doesn't make them as horny as they'd like, or whatever their issue is with Birds of Prey. All that lore in as we carve up the dragon's toes. We had to throw on Radigan's sword seal to hit the dex requirements since we are one dex short. Shouldn't be a problem. After the dragon's dead, we can move it up by one and then grab 35 vigor and start cranking arcane. Sure, this is a weapon that mostly scales with dex, but since it has native bleed, it's better as an arcane arcane weapon. A cult will give it B scaling and arcane, C scaling and dex, E scaling and strength. Keen would be B scaling and dex and E scaling and strength, no other scaling. It has more base damage on Keen as well, but it's a difference of like 20 points. Considering we're going to get 25% more bleed buildup on a cult, it's hard to justify using anything else. Let's hit up the Raya Lucaria Crystal Cave for some smithing stones, then check out the charged heavies on the stone digger miners. You're so cool. 
Beyond the style points, this is great at closing a gap, making us dive forward, and it keeps you safe by flipping you further away on the second attack. Short weapons like claws can struggle getting in and out of combat, so this is so much better than the standard charged heavy on claws. Now to clarify, just because you jump a little bit, it doesn't get boosted by the feathers. And despite being heavies, as you can see against the Crystallion, you have the stance pressure of a wet noodle. You think using charge attacks you get a lot of pressure? Well in this case, Udon! Like an Udon noodle? It works better typed out than it does spoken. Sealed tunnel next, I knew we needed to come here eventually, I was just putting the cart before the horse, or I guess the raven before the writing desk. So fell down wrong, missing a smithing stone 5, and we'll actually be a little low on upgrades because of that, bummer. Onyx Lord is a little rough with light weapons, obviously you're missing the stance pressure, but here you're also missing the poise pressure, that's the effect that interrupts an enemy's attacks. I think halberds and up are what you need here, so we have to trade almost every hit. 40 vigor though, it's simply too good. Now we've leveled up our weapon and can head down to get the last piece of the puzzle. Nerd juice gets carved up and you're a, more like, you're a little late for the fight, buddy. Patches gets carved up like a ham and we shouldn't have done that. More on that in a second. First, we gotta get paid. I don't think assassins get into it for the love of the game. That's just a serial killer who's like, well, might as well get paid for it. Big bleed is fun against the clean rots, but that poise is slightly problematic. Hey, we got thrown up on and didn't get rotted? What's the deal with that? It turns out our pants from the leather set have fantastic immunity. Immunity. That's a good reminder, gamers. If there's expired food in your fridge, just throw on some leather and you can eat it. Tulak is not a nutritionist, and you should not take anything he says seriously. If you eat expired food, Tulak and Mango is not responsible for the runs, the trots, or the Wonka waterfall. Even though Yura didn't help us, we can help him. Hey, y'all want to see my impression of Yura? I'm on my way, buddy. 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 It might seem like we shouldn't fight another one of our fellow Raven Mount assassins, but assassins gotta be capitalists. Less competition, that's better. Oh, he also has fan daggers, and that would have been a nice option. If we left patches alive, we could have bought an unlimited amount, but currently, we can only buy 20. Big bummer. Helping Yura gives us the Raptor of the Mists Ash of War, which doesn't really have any lore. Just kind of explains what it does, and I can do that when we use it. But what if you want to design a website that's simple to use? Well, then you should check out today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace was already easy to use, but it just got even easier with their new design system, Squarespace Blueprint. That's going to help you pick out the best styling options to make your brand pop while making everything work on all devices. It helps you launch your website fast and use those good SEO tools to find out where your customers are coming from. Basically, it's like the guidance of grace, except it leads you to successful website design instead of a big dragon that wants to eat you. They've got dozens of visual design tools to make your website stand out exactly the way you want it to and make it easy to connect your other social media accounts to your website. You'll spend hours optimizing your Elden Ring build, but it'll only take you minutes to optimize your website with Squarespace. Squarespace makes designing your website so easily, I was able to throw together on your work computer in an afternoon. We made it look just like one of those corporate blogs, so your boss will be none the wiser that you're actually goofing off at work. And no matter what you're selling, Squarespace has you covered, whether it's physical goods or digital media or even services. Squarespace has options for you. Go to squarespace.com or click the link in the description to start your free trial today. And when you're ready to publish, go to squarespace.com slash 2 mango and enter offer code 2 mango at checkout for 10% off your first website or domain. Now that I know how to build a website, I'm no longer trembling in my boots. A hunter must hunt. It's a Bloodborne reference. Do y'all play Bloodborne? That one's for you. I like birds. We'll start this next section with the most exciting thing we can possibly do. Going to the Weeping Peninsula to upgrade the flask really quick. Riveting. Now a Radon fight. That would be properly exciting. Let's gather a team up, but maybe don't let them know how many runes you're going to get from killing Radon. You guys are getting paid? Now, Radon is pretty weak to bleed, but we're still on a standard infusion, so it's only 60 bleed up per hit. Twice, since all of our attacks use both hands. What a silly status effect bleed is. This dude gets turned into Arby's so fast, you know it's horse meat, right? That's why they call it horsey sauce. And even though we can't go occult just yet, we crank our arcane. Ah, dex builds. My favorite arcane builds. 
Carry a manor next, might as well, though I don't know if a raven could carry a manor. It's a question of weight ratios, I suppose. Could a 5-ounce raven really carry a several-ton manor? In order to maintain airspeed velocity, a raven needs to beat its wings 43 times per second, right? Now, suppose two ravens carried the banner together. Anyway, let's fight Loretta. She can't bleed, so it doesn't really matter if we're still rocking that standard infusion. The jump attacks are seeing the nice bonus, even if we can't really do much to her. This is probably one of the worst weapons you could use for the Loretta fight, but it's still fast and simple enough. Then we say hi to Ronnie and the gang so that when we go to the bottom of Nakron, we'll be able to open the chest. To pull that off, first we have to beat the Mimic tier, another Raven Mount assassin. This better be the last one, then we can have a Monopoly, truly evil stuff. Here we use the Raptor of the Mists, it lets you dodge automatically and jump in the same time for a sweet punish. All that Raven Mount stuff works together really well, it's pretty great. Now we can go grab the Occult Wet Blade, which currently doesn't give us a bleed boost, damn. A knife for Ronnie as well, and it's Margit time. We haven't done Margit yet? Whoops. Oh well. I'm trying to use Raptor of the Mists, but I'm gonna be honest, it's not much better than just like dodging? In fact, it kind of locks you into going into the air, limiting your mobility. There's 18 frames of invincibility, that's 50% better than a dodge, roughly, but you can follow up a dodge roll with another dodge roll. This just leaves you a follow-up of stabbing. And stabbing is cool, but I think I'm mostly going to prefer just rolling. Especially since this equip load is so light, once we start investing in endurance just a little bit, we'll be in light load. Gostak opens up the danger path for us, but we don't even use it, and then we kill him. We're going up the safe path, because there's another part of the kit we need. Off of the top of the roof, we can take a winding path on a bunch of embankments to go get the claw talisman, and then I realized there's a way easier path after we get it. See, when we jump down here to get to the main area, that's the same rooftop we were on to get the talisman. Suboptimal routing, restart the run. Occult is still not a bleed upgrade, so we're leaving the claw standard for Godric, and it still just shreds them like some barbacoa. I haven't eaten lunch yet, that's why you're getting a lot of food metaphors. With the big upgrade from Godric's Great Rune, we finally get a bleed boost when we go on Occult, as well as just so much damage. The deck scaling is only pretty good on Occult, and the strength is barely there, but five points to both of those stats still helps, as well as all the extra vigor and and endurance. And mind, I guess, but Raptor of the Mist is pretty cheap already. We won't be using it very much, since I prefer rolling. So we'll see for the 25 points to Vigor, Endurance, Strength, Dex, and Arcane. Still huge value. Red Wolf time. I don't know if we're getting bleed procs or if it just has no health. I think it's the latter. Could have used the Raptor of the Mist on the big ball, but I could also just roll underneath it, and I missed the roll. So, you know, whoops. Renala gets bodied in phase one, then we get a stance break in phase two thanks to our jump attacks. She doesn't even get to summon, and neither do we. Maybe if Melania is a huge problem, we'll go get Dean for a fellow bird, but honestly, I like the flavor of a lone assassin. Don't use a spirit ash because it's good or bad, use the spirit ash for the flavor of the build. And speaking of flavor, I'm sure Boggart is cooking up something tasty, but we're just gonna put him on some skewers, and then we can warp to Volcano Manor. Now the Godskin Noble is weakest to slash and bleed, which are exactly what our claws do. Free fight, bleed, crit. We even tickle him through the column during the rollout. And then we get repeating thrusted and lose to a boss that should be one of the easiest ones for us. Oof. Yeah, worth noting this build does have a weakness. The armor's pretty light. It looks cool as hell, but feathers don't offer that much protection. Tirzu did a video on Corvids like the day before we recorded this stream. I learned a lot about ravens. Could this still get to S tier like its real life counterpart? Maybe. Second try, the noble goes much better. The health bar just melts underneath our claws. Rykard bites us too many times and we died. Then we hit him with the serpent hunter. Neat. Little more clean up here. We can talk to Ronnie and then go to the incel river main. Didn't need any ghost wart. Didn't need any somber stones. We'll just fly through the city, then fly through their lake of rot. Low range against Astel could be an issue, especially since he just wants to teleport right away. But then we get a lot of great combos going to build up bleed and get the kill right before another teleport. I've never been punished in my entire life. So far as I know, I cannot die. Will the regal ancestor spirit run faster than its own blood spills? Kinda. Turns out the short, dinky weapons are bad at reaching up to the body, but our jump attacks are boosted and the jumping R1s work? Kinda. They also kinda whiff a lot. It ends up getting the heal twice, but obviously we didn't lose. We got plenty of red flasks left. Since I want the talisman in the sewer, we are not fighting the valiant gargoyles today, which is merciful. They don't bleed. They have great defenses against slash and pierce, and we don't have a spirit ash to distract the other one. It would be a living 
hell. Instead, we'll go to the capital through the Draconic Tree Sentinel, which also has great slash resistance. I'm not sure which of these attacks have piercing. I think it's the jump attacks. Doesn't really matter. More importantly, the horse bleeds, and if it bleeds, it leads. Watching the footage, I think I can confirm jump is pierce. Sure, it is boosted by that, but I think it's not that boosted. Yeah, jump attacks are doing a lot more damage. For a second, we got caught in a wall, but we get out, and he just keeps spamming the lightning. I can't believe it. Someone's camping us? How rude. Once he leaves the coroner, call a coroner. Time for a bird to hit the city. Corvids do great in a city, even though they kinda should an Erdtree Avatar resist slash and bleed, but it's just an Erdtree Avatar. Grave Warden Duelist blocking the Ritual Shield Talisman. See you next week, boys. Can't wait to do that run. The Royal Knight is blocking the Grace, but we just give him the old backdoor surprise and push him far enough away that we can rest. We're not going for the Godfrey Shade right away, actually. We're going underground. Something about all the shit running through these pipes in the Crow set really makes me feel like I'm back in Bloodborne, which makes sense. Yarnum is loosely based off of London. Bamboozle the omen and open the shortcut, then almost die getting pushed off a pipe, but remember, I've never been punished. Gaslight Dungeon is next, the Lindell Catacombs. I don't know who's buried here, but imagine your grave being right next to an open sewer. Whoever it was is not respected. Esker is our goal and he has two dogs. Initiative fixing is the only option. Ring around the rosy until there's a safe window to hit each dog one at a time. It takes a second, but once it's just us and Esker, he bleeds faster than we do. Now why would we get the bleed talisman right before the Godfrey Shade, who can't bleed. Well, once the fight is done, we get another pocket that we can slap the talisman in, and it will be ready for Morgoth who does bleed. Since I always try to beat Morgoth three minutes after I beat Godfrey to maintain the pickle, we need all the help we can get. Godfrey is just a matter of jumping over the rocks and stabbing. Ignore the black knife, ignore the grace, and just sprint right onto Morgoth. I am foolishly going for jump attacks at first when I should be making a combo to get the bleed. Greed almost gets us killed, but we live and get a bleed while Morgoth hacks up a lung. That extra 20% damage from Lord of Blood's Exaltation does not mess around. We save the pickle with a minute to spare. For Biden lands today, we're a raptor. Eagles are a symbol of patriotism, and it's important to note that wanting your country to improve is a form of patriotism, and blindly saying everything is perfect because it's murica isn't love. Loving something means you have to be okay with it changing, especially for the better. Love without change is a hostage situation. Ignore Alice. One day we'll need to fight you again, I guess. Yeah, we're working on another All Bosses run, so one day for sure. After a bit of endurance, we hit light load right before the fire giant. Love that for me. Then we goof the avalanche dodge right at the beginning. Embarrassing. Start making a combo on those toes. Bleed is huge in a fight when the boss has a health bar that is also huge. I'll be honest, this fight is sloppy as hell, but we're fine. It's so weird. The advice I would give to people who want more damage is to level vigor, and to the people who want more health, I'd say you need to do more damage. Spending less time in a fight because you're dealing more damage makes the whole thing feel much safer. And if you're struggling to do damage, being able to take a few hits from a boss makes that feel like less of a problem. It's like an inverse wizard wisdom thing. Faramazula is crumbling, but we can't assassinate the tree until we beat up Merica's dog, and we can't do that until we beat up the Godskin duo. Both Bernie and I bully the Godskin noble while the Apostle tries to get some hits in. It doesn't get enough in. Then our slash and bleed make Godskin pudding, absolutely wrecking those health bars. The status resistance resets on each Godskin, so that means bleed is procking like it's the first bleed every time. Swag jump landed, obviously birds are great jumpers, then the bird run goes fine because I'm a bird. I'm a bird. Stop it. Yeah. Malekith is always a problem when you got stumpy weapons. He bleeds pretty fast, but we have to hit him to make him bleed, and his body is slanted. Hitting him from the side doesn't really work because he always dodges to the side anyway, and then I got hit by everything in phase two. Phase two Malekith does so much damage. Bad news. Hey, everything has to be bad somewhere, right? Next attempt, I figure it out. Jumping R1s are better, getting you up into the tall part of the Garank body rather than the stumpy part. Phase two also goes better just because our dodge timing is better. Who would have thought? If you get hit less, and hit the boss more, the fight goes better. What a concept. Time to find out. I'm a silly goose. You know what would have helped us beat Malekith? If we leveled our weapons up all the way. The thing we could have done after beating the Godskin duo. I guess you all knew I was a silly goose. Best solution to Gideon with claws? Dashing our ones. They look like hugs, which is really funny. We just hug an old man to death. Put three minutes on the clock. Let's see if we can clear Godfrey in that time. Hop over the rocks and uh-oh, too many jump attacks means we got a stance break in the phase transition. We technically save the pickle since it's like a 
minute long fight with all this bleed, but then I just ate another one. Phil was a little extra silly today, gamers. Radagon can't bleed, but the raw damage on these suckers ain't too bad either with the occult infusion. Things would have gone a lot better if we hit the consecrated snow field first, but oh well. Stance break before he jumps, then I got greedy for the combos. Bad rolls on the second hit of the hammer slammer. We are burning through our flasks before the Elden Beast. That charge R2 though is pretty nice, closing out gaps, which gets more important in light load since we roll further away. It's not so much Radagon's hits that are hitting us in this fight, it's the aftershocks that come out after the hits. We make it to Elden Beast with three flasks left. I'm hitting one, two, three, four, five charge attacks, no stance break. Claws don't get you crits, gamers. They are literally in the same category as daggers for stance pressure. Elden Flurry is my least favorite attack to dodge, but we only get hit once, and then we get the stance break. Punish with some flurious combos and get our crit right at the end. Elden Star's time. Shit is obnoxious at first, then it kind of backs off as we hop through the rings. Neat. It's easy to punish the melee attacks that follow, but we really should have gotten the combo stuff before this. Now we actually will go get it, because now we have to fight the real hardest bosses. I'm a raptor, doing what I can, gonna eat everything, kill the appearance of man. Starting with sewer mode for some reason. Hey Streamfill, you really should get the combo stuff before fighting bosses that can't bleed. But I don't want to backseat myself. Honestly, it's fine, but this one is harder than real mode. Halfway through the fight, we still end up chugging three flasks. It's just like the real mode. He's not the real boss here though. It's the sewers. Remember last week when I said I was good at this? I lied. Would the gargoyles have killed us twice? I don't know, but we'll never find out, because I'm not going to willingly add valiant gargoyles to any challenge if I don't have to. At least there's an apology rune arc at the bottom, and a bunch of apology rune arcs when you kill the ants. We do the gargoyle route so often, so it's weird to fight Fia's champs so late. But it is a gank, and it can get out of control pretty easy if you don't have a spirit ash, but they're all anemic, so they bleed really fast. It's super easy. Barely a speed bump. Now I decide it's time to go get the combo stuff. First, we have to kill Millicent because she invaded us. She drops a bunch of random golden runes, but she should drop the Sham Shear with the Waterfowl Dance attached to it as an Ash of War. Oh well, O'Neill gets sliced up so fast, we can't really commentate on it. I ignore all the dudes and hit R1. Then talk to Gowrie, talk to Millicent. Grab the Valkyrie Prosthesis and give it to Millicent. The closest grace I have to the Windmill Village is in the outskirts. And uh, here's a quick reminder to always kill the Catapult dudes if you're going this way. How accurate can these catapults be? Fluke. They're not. They're simply not hitting me again. Well, they won't do it a third time, because that would... That would violate the com comedic rule of twos. Oh. The Godskin Apostle is an Altus boss, and it's weak to everything our weapons do. How did you think it was going to go? Then we finally kill Millicent one more time. It ends as it began. Beautiful symmetry. That's the Millicent Prosthesis for five more decks and five more damage as we build up a combo. Time to be a bird in the castle's hole. We're outnumbered against Nile, but if we just pull off one of the knights one at a time, we should be able to finish Nile pretty quickly. Google, Phil pulls off two knights to finish quickly on your work computer to find out more. Other deck this piece from the Albert Eric, Raven Mount is not picky with their targets. I will kill anyone, anywhere. Children, animals, old people, doesn't matter. Zoom through the consecrated snowfield, but we've got a pit stop before slicing up Moe. We're heading up north to battle the putrid avatar. It's just a putrid avatar. I've literally beaten these with torches. That gives us the thorny cracked tier, and I'm a little thorny for it. I'll admit that. It gives up to a 20% boost on the combos and stacks with the Millicent prosthesis. Y'all, we are going to delete Moe Lord of Blood after deleting the Penguin Noble, of course. Once all of our buffs from bleeding and combo stacked together, each hit gets around a 58% damage boost. Which is why Moog does not get to see the warm embrace of his second phase. Look at me, Moog. Moog, look at me. I'm the Lord of Blood now, okay? You're retired. Placidious Axe is next. He can also bleed, so it should go fine. Even if his bleed resist is like 1,200. Charge in and get those combos flowing until he hits the fire breath that stun locks us into getting hit by it three times. It's a good move. I get why he uses it. Attempt two, let's play safer. Mm, gross. I just want to hold forward in R1. Why is the game making me think about stuff and try? We build the combo on the booty, then build another combo on the foot in the teleport phase, and we just kill him before he can go for the Omega Laser. We're a glass cannon, if a cannon was a buzzsaw. 
So, glass buzz off then. Run through that carrion study hall we need to fight Fortisax, hug Fia a bunch, and that is hug practice to get to the dragon toes with some running R1 hugs. He can bleed, it makes the fight go a little faster when he tries to stall you out. The archers of the liturgical town are kind people defending the only place they've ever felt at home. Anyway. Oh boy, here I go killing again. Then we go build a bird nest in the Hallig tree. It feels like home. Get a second swag jump and it's time to fight Loretta again, but this time she can bleed. That's easier. I try to balance it out by getting hit by every attack, but our damage just bursts out so goddamn fast. Time is almost out for the day. I have to beat Melania on our first try or we'll have to go to another stream. So zoom through Elphael, get a little locked in by the clean rots, but then get out. I wish we still had our quick step for the waterfall, but oh well, we just walk through it. It's not a problem. We have juice. The spiders also want to stall us out as we grab the dragon crest shield, but we don't die this time. Hooray. Okay, first try Melania. Here we go. No spear dash, short weapon, and it'll be fine. It kind of is. The bleed comes out absurdly fast, as do our combos, making our damage huge. Pressing forward also breaks her out of her combos while getting us hit a little bit too, until she duckies us light armor. Eh, you know what? We got time. I can do one more. Did I learn anything from the first fight? Yes. I learned that our damage is cracked and I just need to hold forward and press R1. Great lesson, if there ever was one. The uppercut is such a lovely attack to punish. We live through a ducky and make it to phase two. The leather set has high immunity. Let's charge that onion and get some hits off. Now you're probably noticing we don't get stance breaks, obviously, but the bleed makes up for that. A little too greedy and the onion gets us rotted, so the combos kill us faster. Fudge it one more time. I don't know if I should even count this one. I fully just ran in and attacked until we got duckied, so yeah, next stream, big bummer. We've had times before where we get it on our first run back, though. So will that happen today? Rusty on the sticks? Uh, no, I'm Phil. Rusty is a different Elden Ring creator. We're aiming for bleeds, and then we do science. Does she heal when you use Raptor of the Mists? Yeah. Cool beans. By the way, we're not using it for the ducky dance because I already know it doesn't work. It doesn't last long enough. You dodge a few hits, but then you just get blasted. This one is scuffed. I just quit out to save the rune arc. Second attempt of the day, I remember just fucking attack her. Be aggressive, be be aggressive. Would it be worth it to get the godskin swaddling cloth? We'd have to ditch another talisman and I don't think we'd outheal her damage, so no. Phase two again, we don't take any hits from the onion, but maybe we should have. Doesn't really matter. With the attack of the clones, up close, we're toast. Uppercut early in the next attempt, we burst so much damage out of that. Then another one lets us hit phase two super fast. When we do get a window, we do great damage. The only problem is Melania is like a geth warship. Huh? Mass Effect? Got Mass Effect fans? Here? Where are you at? You'll love that one. This time we do get enough windows and we can run into the onion to finish her off. At 5 hours and 39 minutes, we beat 35 bosses and only died 12 times. It ends up in S tier, tied with Nefeli actually, and that makes sense. Bleed is sick. The claws are fast and cool. Raptor feathers have an upside. To fix this up a little better, put on some heavier pants, gauntlets, and headgear just so you can take a hit. I kind of wish the dex weapon worked a little bit better with the dex stat, but you know, arcane builds are fun. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more you can really help us hit 100,000 subs join the patreon to support the channel it's the best place to do it and you can join the discord where we talk about elden ring and play commander you can also follow us on twitch where we're doing some silly stuff before the dlc comes out